In concept D, we're going to specifically focus on liquids and solids. You're going to need your reference table, so I would take that out and have it ready to go in a couple of slides. Now, with liquids, as the temperature lowers from uh, in a gas sample and pressure increases, the IMS becomes stronger and the motion of a liquid becomes more restricted. Volumes um, of a liquid are definite, but since the particles can closely move around each other, the liquid will always take the shape of the container. Now, one thing I want to focus on is evaporation. This is the process by which particles of liquid have enough energy to overcome those attractive forces of their neighboring particles and escape into the gas state. So this is, we're talking about a phase change from a liquid to a gas. Condensation is going to be the reverse of that, where those attractive particles are going to be pulling each other closer together to form that liquid. Now inside a bubble in boiling water, over on the right here we have our liquid, and as they get enough energy to overcome the attractive forces holding them into the liquid, they instantly then become a gas. And those bubbles, we have a collective group of water particles that have enough energy to form a gas and move away from each other, they rise to the surface and then are allowed to escape off the surface of the liquid. Now the rate of evaporation depends on three factors. The nature of the liquid, weaker IMFs between particles means it will evaporate faster. The temperature of the liquid, if it's hotter, there's more kinetic energy. They can evaporate faster, also more potential energy during the actual phase change. And also the surface area of the liquid. Most people can recognize that a puddle of water will evaporate much faster than water that's in a bottle. And again, that has to do with surface area. And we'll come back to that a little bit in class tomorrow. Now something that might be new is something called vapor pressure. When those particles actually change from a liquid to a gas, they exert a pressure upward as they move from a liquid to a gas. The vapor pressure of a liquid at a given temperature can be found on reference table H, and this is where I want you to take a look at your reference tables. The greater the vapor pressure, the greater the number of particles that are evaporating because there's more of a push up off the liquid. Substances with high vapor pressures evaporate very quickly or readily. Substances that evaporate readily are called volatile. Usually things that um, we can smell right away, tend to be volatile because they're going into that gas state and we're smelling them quickly. Now, when vapor pressure, which is that upward pushing up pressure of a liquid, is equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is the downward pushing pressure pushing down on a liquid, the substance will boil. So let's look into that a little bit more. When the vapor pressure pushing up, and again that's from the liquid changing into a gas, is the same strength or equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is our the air gas particles, oops, sorry, pushing down, then we have boiling that occurs. Now, boiling point um, is usually determined by the pressure that it's at. Now, if we decrease the pressure over a liquid, say we move to a higher elevation, the boiling point actually decreases. So normally we talk about how water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. However, if I move to 10,000 feet, above sea level, it will actually boil at 90 degrees Celsius. And that's because it doesn't need to be as strong, doesn't have to have as high of a vapor pressure in order to match the atmospheric pressure, which is less. And again, we'll come back to this. One thing I do want you to think about if you're having trouble imagining this is, how much energy would you need to use to move down a hallway if it only had a few people walking towards you? You wouldn't have to put forth a lot of energy. So the same thing, if those particles that are in the liquid want to become a gas, they don't need as much energy if there's not as much pushing down on them. Um, so again, keep that in mind. We'll come back to it tomorrow. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is if I increase the pressure over a liquid, such as using a pressure cooker, the boiling point will actually increase because it has to have more strength in order to push up um, and change into a gas. So if I was trying to walk down a crowded hallway, I would have to use a lot more energy to get from point A to point B if everyone was moving towards me because there would be a bigger push um, going against the way that I'm trying to go. Same thing with a higher pressure. If there's a higher pressure over a liquid, those liquid particles are going to have, a, have, have to have a lot more energy to actually become a gas and push their way through the air. And again, we'll come back to that. So moving on to table H though, this is a graph of vapor pressures for four different liquids. Something that you should be able to observe with this graph. The higher the temperature, the higher the vapor pressure. So if I focus on, say, water, at 50 degrees, I might have a vapor pressure of about 12 um, kilopascals. At 100 degrees, 
um, Celsius, the vapor pressure at that point would be 101.3 kilopascals. So increased temperature, increased vapor pressure. This is because the particles have more energy, so they'll be evaporating at a faster rate and thus pushing up at a greater pressure. Another thing you should observe is related to IMFs. At a given temperature, the stronger the attractive forces between the liquid molecules, the lower the vapor pressure because they're not able to escape to be a, a gas as quickly. So propanone has the weakest IMFs, and as we go up, ethanol, water, ethanoic acid has the strongest IMFs. So let me show you you can figure that out. If I'm looking at IMFs and I pick any temperature, I'm going to see that propanone has the highest vapor pressure, meaning that has the most amount of particles that are evaporating or vaporizing into a gas, and thus has the weakest IMFs. Ethanoic acid has the lowest vapor pressure, meaning it has the least amount of gas particles being um, produced. So those have the strongest IMFs. And again, this is something we'll come back to, but I would definitely take the time to mark this down in your packet. Now, some other things you have to be able to do is solve some various questions. One type is being asked what the vapor pressure of a certain compound is at a determined degree Celsius. So what's the vapor pressure of ethanol at 40 degrees? We're going to start at the 40 degree Celsius point on the x-axis, trace up to ethanol, and then go over to the y-axis. So here, given our temperature, which was at 40, I'm going to go up to ethanol, and then I'm going to go over to the left and find my vapor pressure, and see that it's about 10 kilo or 18 kilopascals. All right, another type of question is being asked what the boiling point of a certain compound at a pressure that is given to you. So here we're being given the pressure and asked what our boiling point temperature is. Now I want you to change this because originally this was at 30 kilopascals in your own packet, so make it 130. So what's the boiling point of water at a pressure of 130 kilopascals? Here we're going to start on the y-axis trace a line over to the water curve, and then go down to read off our temperature. Because remember, when vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure, it will boil. So here I'm being given 130 kilopascals. I'm going to go over to the water line, and then go down and read off the temperature. At that temperature, the water will be able to boil. So approximately 114 degrees Celsius when it's at 130 kilopascals. Again, um, I changed it on the side before forgot to update you on this one. All right, and then finally, what's the normal boiling point of a certain compound? The normal boiling point is the temperature which a liquid boils under the standard pressure, which is 101.3 kilopascals or 1 atm. So there's a dashed line that's already set up that's even labeled 101.3 kilopascals. We're just going to follow that across um, and shoot down to whatever molecule we're looking for. Since I'm asking specifically for water, we know it's 100 degrees Celsius and we can check that. All right, finally, just a little bit about solids. As the temperature of a liquid is lowered even more, the intermolecular forces of the attraction become so much stronger that they're able to begin to rearrange themselves in an orderly geometric pattern. Motion is severely restricted to just the particles being able to vibrate in place. All true solids have a structure called a crystal lattice. So just be aware of those terms, crystal lattice, um, geometric pattern, those all represent a solid. Now one thing that I want to mention here is sublimation. This occurs when attractive forces between molecules are so weak that heating a solid causes it to directly go into a gas phase. It takes just a little bit amount of energy to break from a solid and go directly to a gas phase. Now, solids sublime when they have high vapor pressures and weak IMFs under conditions of high temperature and low pressures. So a great example of that is dry ice or solid CO2. These are is a nonpolar molecule, so London dispersion forces that are incredibly weak. And when just a little bit of energy is added just from the air, those can escape directly into a gas. Now the reverse of that is deposition. The gas particle loses enough energy to change directly into a solid. Um, if you go out to your car sometimes on a cold winter you know, morning, you'll see what looks kind of like frost that's formed on your windshield. Now if you were to sit out there all night, you would never see liquid water form on your windshield. It's actually the gas water particles that lose just enough energy immediately to go directly into a solid. Um, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow in class as well. Deposition can occur more easily when pressure is high because the pressure makes it easier for those atoms to come together and obviously temperature is a factor as well. 
All right, so we went over a bunch of facts, talked a lot about table H. We'll come back to that all tomorrow in class.